Hi guys, this is Full Time FM collaborating with FM Scout. For those who don't know me, I'm a football manager, content creator. I've been invited by FM Scout to do some tactical videos for their YouTube channel. This is the third video, uh, the Barcelona team. I'm going to set up some tactics, show you how to get the best out of the best players in the squad. Um, there's going to be a link under the video where you can download it yourself and give it a try, including some uh, screenshots, player stats and stuff like that. I said in the first two videos, which was Arsenal and Aston Villa, I was going to work my way through the Premier League uh, alphabetically. The next, was, next video was going to be Burnley. But I've had some requests in the comment section and of these of the last two videos, and I've had some requests on Twitter as well, asking me to do different teams. So I think it's probably best to um, give the viewers what the what what they want instead of giving them what I think they want. So yeah, I think I'll be doing requests for the um, for the rest of this series, the tactical series. Um, the biggest one I've been having coming in is Barcelona. I've also had Man United, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, uh, Bristol Rovers. Brighton, so some teams like that. So there'll be a couple of mixed tactics in the series as well. Not just the big clubs. Some of the lower league clubs will get some tactics made for them too. You can have a try and uh, work out for yourself. But in this one, it's the uh, Spanish La Liga Giants, Barcelona. Got some top players in defence, in midfield and up front. And uh, what I'm going to try and do in this video is emulate how Barcelona play in real life. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at the squad. So, working from the goalkeeper position, I'm going to work my way through the defenders, midfielders and uh, strikers, and then come up with a tactic that I think will get the best out of the players. So, the first player in the team, Claudio Bravo, 83 caps for uh, Chile. He had a top World Cup, and I think that's why Barcelona signed him. Six foot, um, so he's a big goalkeeper. Good, good aerial ability, commands his area pretty well, communicates quite well. Quite eccentric as well. I don't like to have an eccentric goalkeeper. The kind of goalkeeper like uh, Bartes that will come out of his area and do a bit of dribbling and uh, maybe get tackled and he's got he's left the uh, entire net open. But he makes up with that because he's handling and kicking a very good. One-on-one's not bad. Penalty taking, we don't really care about that. That's not his job. His reflexes are very good. His rushing out's not bad and his throwing's not bad as well. Tendency to punch is nine. Um... But if you look at his decisions, that's 14, so that's not bad as well. So he does know when the right time to punch and the right time to catch is. It's quite aggressive. Anticipation, bravery and composure aren't the best, but they're not bad. Concentration, decisions and determination, again, not the best, but not bad. Um, his leadership's not bad. His positioning's not bad. He's got good teamwork and very good vision. So he can set off a counter-attack if he gets that ball looks up and see a, sees a player in a good position, he can boot it to him because his kicking is 19. So um, he's a good goalkeeper to start off counter-attacks. His acceleration is not bad. Um, his agility is not bad as well. And he's a fit guy. He doesn't usually get injured. So that's Claudio Bravo. We've then got Mark andre to Stegen, the young German goalkeeper, only 22. Only got four caps for Germany, but he's not going to knock uh, Manuel Neuer out of the team just yet. Six foot two. 15 for strength, so he's a big, strong goalkeeper. Aerial ability is only 12, but like I said, he's only 22, and that is quite young for a goalkeeper. Command of area and communication are both good. He's quite eccentric as well. Handling's not the best, but that will get better as time goes by and he gets a bit older. His kicking's good. His one-on-ones aren't bad. Reflexes aren't the best, but they're not too bad. His rushing out's good. Like I said, he's a big goalkeeper, so his, his one-on-ones are pretty good. He's rushing out. He times that well. And his throwing's good as well. Now he reads the game very well for a 22-year-old keeper. That's 17. He's brave, so he will put a challenge in. He won't pussy out of challenges. Very composed on the ball, like most German goalkeepers. Concentration's only 12, and his decisions are only 13. But again, only 22. Determination, 19. Positioning, that will get better as well. Good teamwork. Um, he's pretty quick off his line, so his acceleration's good. Decent agility, decent balance, and a good jumping reach as well, so we can come and claim them crosses. So, out the two goalkeepers, if I was going to pick one of these for his first season, I'd probably go with Bravo for the experience and uh, play to Stegen in the cup games, or if you've got a match at the new Camp against the lower teams, give him a bit of game time. Because I've actually played with Barcelona on FM15, and he does become a top goalkeeper by the time he's 26, 27. So, um, I'd have faith in him. 
have a bit of faith in him and uh, just let him play in the in the lower games. But for your big matches, big Champions League games, I'd go for Claudio Bravo. Then got Gerard Piquet. Probably one of the luckiest guys on the planet. 27, multi-millionaire, plays for one of the biggest teams in the world. And he's, uh, he's getting it on with Shakira. Could his life be any better? Probably not. Big, strong centre-back, 64. Uh, 64, bloody hell. Six foot four, strength, 16. Heading's good, marking's good. He can pass the ball. Tackling's good. He's got a good technique, so he is a good ball-playing defender. Quite aggressive. He reads the game very well. He's brave, composed, makes the right decisions. Good leadership skills. Positioning is absolutely fantastic. Good teamwork and work rate. He's not the quickest at setting off, but once he starts going at full pelt, he does, his pace does pick up, and his jumping reach is 16 as well, so not many players are going to beat him in the air. So that's Gerard Piquet. We've then got Mark Bartra. 23, got one cap for Spain, 6 foot. Heading's not bad, marking's not bad. Again, passing's not bad. These uh, Barcelona centre-backs do like to uh, pass the ball. They get trained that way at the, um, the Mas La Masaya which is the very famous um, youth academy that Barcelona produced their players from. You know, Messi came through there. I know he's Argentinian, Argentinian but they did pick him up at 15-14 and uh, trained him themselves. I think Pepe Reina came through there as well. Fabregas, Valdez, Puyol, Iniesta and Xavi, um, the De Santos brothers. So uh, a lot of these centre-backs can actually play football too and pick out a pass. Tackling's good, decent technique. Reads the game well. He's composed and his concentrations are good. Decisions, he makes the right decisions. Positioning is very good as well. Pretty strong. He's not the strongest, but he's not he's not a little weakling either. He's not going to get knocked off the ball too easily. And he's quite fast as well. Oh, wrong, wrong way. Now, Thomas Van Marlen. Not seen much of him at Barcelona because he's absolutely injury prone. Um, he's 28, 48 caps for Belgium. Six foot, strength 14, so he's pretty big and pretty strong. His heading's good, marking and tackling are good. Decent technique. Um, he's got a decent long shot as well, 13. I've seen him score some screamers for Arsenal uh, a couple of years ago, so he has got a good long shot on him. Very aggressive, reads the game very, very well. Very brave. He's composed, concentrates pretty good. Decisions making is not the best, um, but his teamwork, positioning, anticipation and all that kind of make up for it. Again, not the quickest, but not the fastest. And he's got a very good jumping reach too. Jeremy Matteo, 30 years old. Got one cap for France. Six foot four. Very, very strong. Not going to get knocked off the ball easily. His tackling's not the best, but he doesn't really need to be. He can use his strength to knock some little guy off the ball. Heading's not bad. His marking's not bad. His, his mental attributes are pretty good as well. They're between 12 and 15. Positioning's good. Not the fastest at setting off, but when he does get to full speed, he is pretty quick at 15. Good stamina, good strength. Um, so I'd probably say he's probably best used as a backup player. Javier Mascherano, 30, 105 caps for Argentina. You don't get 105 caps for Argentina if you're not a very good player. Um, versatile, he can play uh, defensive mid, centre mid, um, centre back, sweeper, right back or right wing back. Decent first touch, heading's not very good, so I try not to play him as a centre back because he's only five foot nine, not got a very good jumping reach. So if he's up against someone like Zlatan Ibrahimovic or Giroud or Lukaku, you know, a big centre forward like that, he's um, he's not going to win the ball. So I try and avoid playing him as a centre back. Marking's good, very very good at tackling, good work rate, teamwork and positioning are good, good leadership skills, very determined, concentrates good, composure's good, his bravery's maxed out. Reads the game absolutely brilliant, and he's very aggressive. Pretty quick as well, and a good stamina. And that's Mascherano. Now going for the wing backs, we've got Montoya. He's an attacking fullback. He can dribble and cross. Not bad at tackling. Uh, his positioning and off the ball is pretty good. He's very quick. Uh, he's only 23 as well, so his attributes will get higher. I know he looks about 35, but he's only 23, the lad. Quite brave as well. Very versatile. Can play on either flank of the uh, defensive positions. He plays a wing back as well, or a right mid, or a right winger. That's Montoya. Then got Dani Alves, 31, 78 caps for Brazil. We all know about Dani Alves. He likes to overlap his winger. Get he scores some goals. He sets a lot of goals up as well. He can cross. He can dribble. Good first touch. His long shots are good. 
decent at free kick taking. His tackling is not bad. He's got a good technique, very good work rate. You do see him running up and down that flank all day long. Very fast, good stamina as well. He doesn't get tired too easy. He's aggressive, determined. He's got a bit of flair for a right back. He's off the ball's good as well. So we will find some space when he gets up the pitch. Adriano, 29, 17 caps for Brazil. Same kind of player as Dani Alves. Likes to get up and down the flanks. Um, very versatile. Can play all over the pitch on either flank. Not very strong. Um, his tackling's not the best, but he's an attacking fullback. Kind of like, you know, well, most Brazilian fullbacks are attacking. The likes of Cafu, Roberto Carlos, uh, Rafael. Uh, what was that big? Mike on. Mike on was a very attacking fullback too. Um, Luis Adriano is another one. So that's Adriano. Jordi Alba, top player, 25, 24 caps for Brazil, uh, Spain. Absolutely rapid. No one's going to outburn him. You know, we could keep up with the likes of Theo Walcott. That's how quick he is. Again, he can dribble and cross, tackle, good work rate, off the ball's good. He's got the determination. He's brave, aggressive, and uh, reads the game well as well. That's Jordi Alba, top little player. Sergi Samper, only 19. He's come through the La Messiah too. Plays a as a defensive midfielder. Very good at passing. Very good technique. Vision and teamwork are excellent. Decision making is very good. He's composed. He reads the game very good too. Top first touch. He's a proper Barcelona Youth Academy players, uh, player. He's got all the right attributes to um, play as a deep line playmaker. So that's Sergio Sampra. He's going to be a top player when he's older. Sergio Busquets, 25. Looks a bit like Woody from Toy Story. 68 caps for Spain. Again, very versatile. Got all the right attributes to play as an anchor man or a centre mid. Reads the game very good. Positioning's very good. Teamwork, vision's good. Um, he's quite strong. He's six foot two, so he's a big guy. First touch is excellent, as is his marking and passing. Tackling and technique are good too. He's not the he's not the quickest, but his positioning kind of makes up for that and he's reading of the game. So um it's not like that'll affect the way he plays, not being the quickest player. I'm going to miss out the um, people who are out on loan and just stick to the players over here. Ivan Rakitic, again, very versatile player, can play pretty much anywhere in midfield. Good at passing, techniques good, long shots are very good, he can take a free kick, good first touch. Uh, he looks like he's a very good set piece taker because his corners are good as well. Crossing's good, um, concentration's not too bad. Again, not the fastest player, but his vision's good. He looks like I'd probably play him in centre mid if he was going to be me starting 11. Uh, we've got Mane. Again, 18. Came through the Youth Academy. Can play up top or either flank or behind the striker. Going to be a class player when he's older. He says here, potential to be a key player of the first team squad. Off the ball's good. He's got the flair. Um, his agility is good. Pretty quick. He can dribble. Good first touch, good technique. So he's going to be a class player when he's older. Neymar. I've actually got Neymar on my Man United career on my YouTube channel. Um, bought him for 18 mil. Worth every penny. Top player to have on your left flank to cut inside. Dribbling's maxed out. He's very quick. Got the flair. He's off the ball's top. Uh, his penalty taking's good as well. Good technique. He can finish. He can cross. Good first touch. Reads the game well. Very, very fast. Agility is good. Top player Neymar. You'll uh, have some fun playing with him. Xavi. One of my favourite ever footballers. First touch maxed out. As is his passing. His vision. Decisions and composure. Physical attributes aren't the best. But. Is that kind of player like Xavi. Uh, like uh, Perlo. Paul Scholes. Silver. Doesn't need to be big and strong. Just relies on his reading of the game. And his passing ability. And his first touch. So uh, I wouldn't worry too much about his physical attributes because his mental and technical attributes make up for that. So Xavi, proper, proper top player. We've then got Rafinha. Again, plays anywhere in midfield or up top. 21, Brazilian. Going to be a class player when he's older. Pretty quick, aggressive. Uh, he can dribble and cross. His first touch ain't bad. He can pass. Good work rate. And these will only get better, his mental attributes, as time goes by. We've then got Adama Traore, 18, out and out winger, absolutely rapid, and he can dribble, but that is about it, and he's got the flair too, 
Looks like he's a bit of a nanny player, nanny or a Zahar or someone like that. But give him time. Um, he will. It says down here potential to be a key player of the first team squad. Give him time. If you win in a game six nil and you've got half an hour left, get him on. Give him a bit of game time, and uh, I'll sure he'll, I'm sure he'll get better. Iniesta, another one of my favourite players of all time. Top first touch, dribbling's very good. Technique's maxed out, as is his vision. Composed, reads the game top. He's got the flair off the ball's good. And the same with Xavi. Wouldn't worry too much about his physical attributes because he doesn't rely on them. So that's Iniesta, proper proper top player. Then got Sergio Roberto, 22. I think he came through the Youth Academy as well. Yeah, he did. He's only ever played for Barcelona. Uh, so Sergio Roberto. Plays as a roaming playmaker. He can play up top or defensive mid or behind the striker. I think this guy will be good enough to replace Xavi when he retires. As you can see, like most of the players that come through the Barcelona Youth Academy, good first touch. Uh, decent at passing, good vision. Teamwork and work rate's good. He's composed, concentration, determined. So um, I'd give him some game time as well if you've got some easy uh, fixtures coming up. Pedro. 26, another guy who came through the Youth Academy. Very, very quick. He can dribble. He can cross. Good at finishing. Can play on either flank. Passing's not the best, but it's not the worst. He's got a good technique. Very good work rate. And he's off the ball's good as well. Luis Suarez, everybody's favourite footballer. 81 caps for Uruguay. 43 goals. Like I said, I'm a Man United fan. Um, didn't have much love for the guy when he was at Liverpool, but I can't deny how good of a player he is. He is a top player. He will score your goals, and I think he was worth the 70-odd million Barcelona paid for him. You know about Luis Suarez. Dribble, cross, finishing, first touch. He can take free kicks. Good at long shots and heading. He can pass. Technique's good. Vision and work rate's good. He's got the flair and determination. Um, his composure's good. His, biting's, uh, his bravery's good. Anticipation's good, aggression's good. You know, out and out forward, top player, can play on either flank or behind the striker too. And last, but by no means least, the little maestro, Lionel Messi. He can cross, he can take a corner. Dribbling, finishing and first touch and maxed out, as is his technique. His vision's very good, his flair and determination are maxed out as well. As is his agility, he's absolutely rapid. Reads the game very well. Um, he can take a free kick, he can take a long shot, he can pick out a pass. By a mile, he is the best player on this game. I know some people like playing with Ronaldo. I've played with Messi with the tactic I'm about to, to give you in a minute. And I think he scored something like 35 goals in 11 games playing with these tactics that I'm about to show you. Um, and you know what to say, it's the tactic that did that, but he does score them kind of goals in real life with them stats. Um, so yeah. So, they're the players, and the tactic, and the formation, player roles, and all that kind of stuff, is going to look a little bit like this. So, four at the back, three midfield, two wingers, and your striker. So, it's up to you who you pick out the two goalkeepers, but I'd go with experience and put in Bravo. And then put in PK and Vermaelen. I think they'd uh, complement each other quite well. They're both big and strong, and are pretty quick. Danny Alves on the right. Jordi Alba on the left. Busquets just in front of the back four. Xavi and Iniesta in centre mid. And Messi up top with Neymar and Luis Suarez on the flanks. Now, the way this works, the mentality is attacking. The team shape's fluid and is the instructions. Retain possession, you've seen Barcelona do it in real life. Move it around quick, nice short passing, also known as the tick attacker. Work the ball in the box, you don't want to see any of your players trying to get a Hollywood goal from 50 yards. Um, you'll just give the ball away, you don't want to see that happen. Low crosses, your strikers aren't the biggest players in the world, but they're uh, off the balls very good, so if you get one of them to smash it in low, they can lose the marker. Doesn't matter how big the marker is, they can lose them and uh, find a bit of space to get a shot on goal. Look for the overlap. You've seen Danny Alves do it. You've seen Johnny Alba do it. Uh, get up the pitch. Overlap the winger and drill in a low cross. Much higher defensive line. So the, the back four and Busquets will push right up. Not letting the opposition out of their own half. 
run from your positions makes it very hard for the opposition to mark you. Close down more. You don't want to give your opposition time and space. You've seen you've seen Barcelona do it in real life. They don't let the opposition have any time on the ball whatsoever. They absolutely hound them until they either make a mistake or uh, just try and get the long ball, which for Marlon or PK will intercept. Use tighter marking. Use the offside trap because your players are pushed so high up. Higher tempo, like I said, also known as the tick attacker, and be more expressive. So for the player roles, Messi, deep lying forward. The role, I played in with this role, um, you can look at the screenshots um, when you click the link under the video and see how many goals he scored. I think in, I, I think a Celta Vigo match is on there, and I think he scored eight goals in that game, playing with this tactic. And what he'll do, he'll drop back, pick the ball up, run at the back four, who will absolutely, they'll be terrorised just by the sight of him running at them. And they'll be all over the place, and that'll leave some gaps for your wingers to exploit. So we have Neymar as an inside forward and Luis Suarez as a winger. They will swap positions because they can both play with either right or left foot. And um, it makes them harder to mark when they're swapping over onto the different flank. Got Iniesta as your roaming playmaker. He's going to roam around looking for space. He's going to feed the striker and the wingers. Um, he's off the ball. He's very good. His vision is very good. He's got a good technique, passing and first touch. So he's uh, going to be setting your players up, finding space and all that kind of stuff. Xavi, your deep line playmaker. He's not got the legs to be up and down all the time. He's not got the stamina as well. Um, he's, time is catching up with him. But as a deep line playmaker, he'll just sit back, receive the ball, play some nice passes. If he sees an opportunity, he'll uh, feed the players up top as well. Now with Xavi, I'm also going to give him the more direct passing role. Because if he spots a pass, I'm going to let him uh, go a bit more direct. If Neymar's got a bit of space or messy, then he can break my instruction of shorter passing and uh, bang the ball up. Sergio Busquets playing as a register. As you can see, he's got all the right attributes to play with to play with that role. He's going to sit in front of the back four, um, help them out. When we've got the ball, he'll push up a little bit further and uh, make a little triangle with Iniesta and um, Xavi. Some nice little passing, get the ball up, and then they can feed the players up top. He's also big and strong, so um, he'll help break down the opposition when they're trying to attack. The full backs will be playing as complete wing backs. You've seen their attributes. We went through them before. They can dribble and cross. They're pretty much wingers, the full backs at um, Barcelona. Very quick, dribble, cross, they can tackle as well. So they're going to play as complete wing backs and overlap um, Neymar and Suarez, who are going to tuck inside. Your centre-backs are going to play, uh, Vermaelen is going to be a centre-back with closed down less. Reason for being closed down less, if we haven't got the ball, you don't want Vermaelen running out of position, leaving a gap here between the other centre-back and left-back for the opposition team to expose. PK, we looked at his attributes before, he can actually play a bit of football too. So he's going to be a ball-playing defender because he can pass as well. Same with him though, closed down less. You've seen Barcelona do it in real life. Every single player is pressing the opposition. Apart from the centre-backs, they wait for the right time to make the tackle. And the goalkeeper, because you want to retain possession, um, distribute to the flanks. So that's how the team, the team sets up. With your set pieces, just click on the top button here. Rakitic, Xavi and Neymar are your best um, corner takers. Free kick takers, Suarez. Rakitic, Xavi, Neymar and Messi. You can pick these yourself as well. I'm just showing you the quick guide how to do that. So what I would do for Barcelona, I'd probably play it short on both sides. So you want your full backs to stay back in case you lose the ball. Like I said, you've not got the tallest team, so you don't want to just be smashing it into the box because you won't win any of the headers. Unless it's PK who gets it on the end of it. And it'll have to be a pinpoint pass. Uh, you, want, you still want PK to go forward though. And Vermaelen. You want Busquets to stay back too. Xavi can challenge the goalkeeper. You want Neymar to come short. 
and everyone else in the box. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Because what this will do, you're not going to uh, just smash it into the box. You're going to take a short corner, work the work uh, the ball into the box and try and score that way. So that's how I would set up my corner attacking. Defending, the two full backs on either post. PK and Vermaelen on uh, Mike and the tall players. Busquets as well. He can close, uh, it's only mark the six yard box. So can Xavi Iniesta. I'd have Suarez on the edge of the box. And then if you get the ball back, you can then start a counter-attack with your two quick players, Neymar and Messi, staying up top. And then that's how you'd start your counter-attack. With the free kicks, I always go for best header. Get your big men forward, um, your two full-backs and your defensive midfielder staying back as well. Get it in the box, aim for your best header and try and score a goal that way. With defending, um, a free kick. You want your defenders to man mark. Busquets to stay back. Um, Javet and Iniesta to go back as well. I'd leave Messi up top in case you get the ball back. And you can start a counter attack that way. And uh, Suarez and Neymar to form the wall. So, that's the set pieces. So, if we look at the team now, it does look like a very strong team. The board want you to win the league and get into the Champions League. And they want you to play possession football. And attacking football and this formation will give you that like i said there'll be a couple of screenshots um on the link when you click it on the fm scout website so you can check out how this formation uh works on the game to see where you could improve this um i don't know maybe you could get another center back for the marlin i'm not too sure i'd say all the other positions are pretty much covered because you could if something happened to messi you could put suarez there and then you could put um, Racket, um, Monet or Rafinha on that flank, or Pedro, and the same on this flank. Sergio uh, Sampa and Sergio... Let's have a look at his name. I forgot his name. Sergio, Sergio Roberto can cover Xavi and Iniesta. You've got Mascherano, who can cover Busquets. Adriano can cover Alba. Montoya, who can cover Dani Alves. You've got Tostegan, who can cover Bravo. So yeah, I'd probably go for another centre back if um, if I was going to go out and buy a player. You don't have much money to spend, to be fair. But I think they're taking into account Luis Suarez, how much they've just paid for him. So you've got just under eighteen mil. If you go into your scouting and see you could buy. So we'll go on position. Can play as a centre back. Now, I'd probably go for considering the money you've got. Let's have a look. Havadez is a pretty good defender. You can probably get him for about 13 mil. Six foot two, 28 caps for Germany. Very strong. Um, I'll just click on this so you can see his attributes a bit better. Yeah, heading's good, marking's good, tackling's good, his teamwork and positioning's good, he's determined, he concentrates good. Big and strong and he's pretty quick. So I'd probably go for Benedict Habedez. Um, Who else is there? I'd say Chiellini. But he's getting on a bit now. So I'll probably give him a miss. There's also Garay. Um, and Subatic. Or you could even put in a cheeky bid. In for Mats Hummels. You could probably get him for about 24 mil. If you wanted to flog some of your deadwood. You know I'd, I'd have said Jeremy uh, Mateu. Probably sell him. Get a bit more money in. If you put about 24, 25 million bid in for Mats Hummels, put something like a 50% um, to give back to Dortmund and your next sale as well, that'll probably help out. So yeah, the recommendation for a Barcelona signing would be Mats Hummels. About 25 mil should get him. But like I said, you've not got that much money in the bank, so we'll try and sell a little bit of Deadwood just to uh, get an extra 8 mil in the bank. So I think that's going to be it for this video. This is the Barcelona Tactical Team Guide for FM Scout. Uh, click the like button if you like it. Leave a comment in the comment section if you want to recommend a team for my next video. Uh, there's going to be a link for my personal YouTube page as well if you want to check out some of my videos. And um, yeah, I'm not too sure who to do next. Maybe Bayern Munich. Uh, there's Real Madrid, Dortmund. 
Liverpool, Man United, Newcastle. There's a million teams to pick from. But like I said, I'm going to let you decide that. So leave your comments in the comments section and I'll see you guys next time.